Hello, it's Grace. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be filming a video that I have made up because I think I'm clever. I'm calling it Frankenbooks. Kind of just because it's October now, it's spooky season. This makes it sound spooky. It's not a very spooky video actually, so apologies if you thought this was going to be like a Frankenstein themed video. What this is, is basically books <laughs> that I think are like an amalgamation of two different books or books that have something which takes two things from two other books that I really like to make a book. Am I making sense? Uh, it's kind of like, if you like this, then you like this, which is one of my favorite videos to watch, only more books. I've basically ransacked my shelves because I've got seven Franken books to talk about and they all involve three books. So I could also, I suppose, have been like bookish love childs. If I ever do this again, I'll wait until Valentine's Day and then theme it around that. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, it's very possible. I'll just start by talking about my first Franken book and you should hopefully get the idea. I think that Normal People by Sally Rooney, which I don't have because my copy's at work, and Swing Time by Zadie Smith would make the Franken book Americana by Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie. Normal People, as I'm sure many people know, it's a very beloved book. I indeed love it myself. It's basically about a couple, Connell and Marianne, who are two young teenagers growing up in Ireland and it's basically their friendship, their romance and it's a bit of a will they won't they. They stay very connected throughout their whole lives but they're constantly like just missing each other or not making it work. They're kind of being like pulled apart and pulled together. I think that aspect of that kind of friendship romance coming up against it is very present in Americana by Chimamanda and Gozi Adichie. In this book, our main character, Ifemelu, and her boyfriend when she's a teenager, Abinze, they grew up together in Nigeria and then they're pulled apart when Ifemelu moves to America for university and Abinze doesn't and he ends up later in life moving to London. So you follow, like with normal people, you follow both of the perspectives. Normal people's a much more 50-50 split. Ifemelu is the main character in this book, I would say, but you follow their relationship and I think like normal people it's a, it is kind of a romance the main point of the novel or a large part of the novel is a kind of romantic relationship but it's not a romance in like a traditional way and you get a lot of the characters by themselves as well as together and I think that balance makes means that in normal people and in Americana by the end of it you're really rooting for this couple because you love them both so much however what this book has that comes from its other parent swing time is like I say if Melo is the main character of the book and a lot of the book is about race it's about if Melo as a Nigerian woman moving to America and kind of navigating this new environment because when she's at home in Nigeria race isn't a massive issue in the same way that it is in America. The book talks a lot about race. It's really fascinating on race actually. If Melo ends up having a blog when she's in America that looks at African Americans and non-American Africans. You get parts of If Melo's blog where she's talking about all these things and her experience of and kind of her developing understanding of race in America as opposed to at home. And I think that really speaks to swing time. So in swing time you're following um, a nameless protagonist who is English. She is a young mixed race girl growing up in London and the book is about a lot of things but it's very much about race and kind of discovery of ideas around race. The kind of central or one of the central plots of this novel is our, the relationship between our nameless narrator and another girl, the only other mixed race girl who lives near her in London and their relationship and the bond they form basically because they're the only person who looks like them and how that relationship develops, the different directions their lives go in. But also our nameless protagonist ends up working for a really famous Australian pop star. And basically this pop star decides that she wants to do a big project in West Africa, kind of starting a girls school and educating girls. And through that, our protagonist travels to West Africa a lot, gets to know that culture, and it brings up a lot of questions for her around her identity and her blackness because in London she is kind of othered and her blackness is something that she has to contend with every day but when she's in West Africa she's barely even seen as being black or being African. Our protagonist's mother was is from Jamaica so there's a lot of those ideas about race and the way that your race and your identity shifts as you shift 
place and as you shift environment. So I definitely think there's a lot about that in both of these, especially as it's young female protagonists, uh, also in swing time because of this pop star's kind of intervention into West Africa. There's a lot of ideas around like the white savior and that kind of thing. And there's definitely similar issues discussed in Americana. So I basically think that normal people plus swing time equals Americana and they're all great, so read them. The next Franken baby is, I think that if you add The Secret History by Donna Tartt and The Female Persuasion by Meg Wolitzer, you would get The Red Word by Sarah Henstra. I haven't talked about this book on my channel yet because Kieran from Katie Books gave it to me and I'm doing a whole vlog on reading books he gave me and I haven't finished that vlog yet. So let's talk about it. The Secret History, a classic. I'm sure a lot of you know it. I'm sure a lot of you love it. I personally love it. It's a story about an elite group of students at a university in America who study ancient Greek and a new our protagonist is new to the university and he really wants to get in this clique and he does and then a lot of dark stuff happens right at the start of the book you know that someone's died but you don't know who and yeah it's very intense very creepy very dark academia and almost a sort of like cultish group of students who are pushing the boundaries and pushing their morality I guess to the extremes. The Female Persuasion on the other hand by Meg Wolitzer is another university novel and it looks at our main character Greer who goes to university and starts getting involved in feminism. Uh, there's an older very famous feminist called Faith who Greer becomes involved with kind of through things that happen at university and then out of university into the world and it's a lot about feminism, the different waves of it, Greer's journey with feminism, how she's sort of so in awe of Faith to begin with and she really is, she's so hungry for her attention and Faith's really opened her eyes but then the ways in which Faith kind of changes, the way that Greer's opinions start to change and she's not sure how much they align with Faith anymore. So yeah, I really, I like this book. I love The Secret History, but I think their Franken baby is The Red Word. So The Red Word is another kind of dark academia collegiate novel, and it has so much of both of these things. So you're following um, our protagonist, Karen. I think she's in her second year when the novel starts, and she needs a new house, and she finds this group of girls who live together um, in this house that they call Raghurst, and she's immediately enamored by them. They're very feminist. They are very involved with the women's center and the women's group at university, and they kind of have an ongoing feud or an ongoing uh, anger petition against the Greek life at university, also Greek, as in like the sororities and particularly the fraternities. And the whole book actually has a lot of kind of ancient Greek ideas as well because Karen studies on this literature women's studies course that looks at Greek myth and women. So yeah, they kind of hate this fraternity and there's been a few incidents with one man in particular and they're trying to kind of bring it down. But then Karen is also in a relationship or gets into a relationship with one of the men in this fraternity. So she's really trying to balance this amazing group of women she feels that she's so enamored by that she wants to be in with their opening her mind, but then she's also kind of enjoying parts of the frat life and she's straddling both of them. It very much had ideas of the female persuasion in that kind of cultish almost group of like edgy feminist women, like I am a completely signed and sealed feminist, but you know that very like, when you're at uni and like you're a bit pretentious as the characters in The Secret History are, but that idea of getting really caught up in these new ideas and opening your mind to it. Um, but then also it's a lot, a lot, lot darker than the female persuasion, much more like the secret history, it stays in university the whole time and some bad things happen in here that kind of come out of these two groups and the things that they're involved with secretly that Karen starts to learn more about and I would say the ending of this book, which I really enjoyed, kind of took me by surprise, definitely chimed with the secret history in some ways. Um, yeah, like I say, it's quite dark and, and creepy and there's a bit of a, like an explosive incident that happens. But yeah, I definitely think this is such a Franken book between Secret History and The Female Persuasion, The Red Word. Okay, next up. I think that The Franken Baby of, do you know why I keep saying Franken Baby when I've called this thing Franken Books? Anyway, The Franken Book of My Dark Vanessa by Kate Elizabeth Russell and Lolita by Vladimir Nabokov is Putney by Sofka Zinoviev. So, 
I have talked about in a video that I did ages ago when I was very new to the old booktube about like if you like this you like this I compared these two books because they are very similar in a lot of ways so My Dark Vanessa came out this year I absolutely love this book I think it's excellent it is about a girl called Vanessa who is now in her I think late 20s maybe and she is being forced to reflect on her time in a boarding school as a teenager where she became involved in a relationship with one of her teachers she sees this as a relationship as her first love she knows it's kind of a bit problematic but she's still in touch with this man and for her it really was a, a valid relationship that just wouldn't have been accepted by the outside world but now other allegations have started to come out about this teacher and she is being kind of pressed to come forward. So she really struggles with her situation now. And then you get a lot of flashbacks and kind of trying to reevaluate that memory and, and the way she's felt about something, the way she's like received, perceived something for so long and what that kind of does to her. Putney is very similar. So this is set in England and this is about a 40 something woman I think she's a mother again for various reasons starting to reflect on a relationship that she had when she was a very young child with an older man who was a friend of her father so this one is definitely more I mean they're both awful and horrible to read about uh, if you're not good with that kind of thing definitely steer clear this one I don't want to say this one's any worse but this one starts from a much younger age and therefore feels a lot more I don't know even more uncomfortable to read and again she is at a point in her life where she's starting to look back on what happened and having to change her perception on it so in that way they are extremely similar um, and both of them obviously draw from Lolita and kind of reference Lolita because you can't kind of extricate ideas of Lolita when you're talking about a paedophile preying on a young woman. My Dark Vanessa you know references like Nabokov and things. The reason I would say that these two make Putney is that Obviously in Lolita, if you don't know, you follow a man called Humbert Humbert, who is a paedophile basically. Uh, a lot of people kind of hate this book and I can see why they do, but the book isn't like justifying paedophilia. But anyway, for a different video. You follow this man who falls in love with a, I think she's 12 at the time, a girl called Lolita. And it's basically about him trying to like pursue her. It is very dodgy and creepy. The reason it's more these two make this is that in Putney, you get the perspective of this man who has the like the humbert figure so in my dark vanessa you hear a lot about this teacher and um, but you never get his perspective in putney it's a split perspective between our main character who is called daphne and ralph who is this man so ralph is 25 when they meet and daphne is a child a very very young child and ralph is very humbert-esque in the way he like thinks about Daphne the way he sort of tries to put like agency on her but I think that perspective the fact that you get his perspective which seems strange and it is kind of difficult to read but that allows the book to then really like interrogate his mind and like the figure of that sort of predator and, and how insidious and kind of evil they are so i'd recommend like both of these books hugely and i'd recommend lolita and like i say they are very similar but definitely the only thing missing from that to that is basically this this one might seem a little strange but bear with me i think that the franken book of one day by david nichols and red at the bone by jacqueline woodson is homegoing by yargassi one day don't have my copy is a very famous book about a couple um kind of not dissimilar to normal people in that you're following a man and a woman who are friends and have had a romantic entanglement they meet the university and it follows their kind of relationship but the thing about one day is each section is written on the same day each year so you don't get anything else about what happens to them in that year you just get the perspective of emma and the perspective of dexter on this one day and then you'll just move forward to the next day and you just kind of have to catch up. I really like that that book. Uh, I think a lot of people do. I like David Nichols' style. He's very kind of like bittersweet. And then Read at the Bone is a book that I read this year and loved, haven't stopped talking about. And it's extremely different. Couldn't really be more different. You're following a family in New York. There's Melody, who's the daughter, and her parents who got together when they were teenagers and had Melody and have since kind of separated and then you're also looking at Melody's mother's parents, I can't remember her name, and Melody's father's family. And it's really a book about, about, it's like a sprawling epic in a very short, very beautifully written book because 
you look at these generations and what they kind of pass down and a lot of times it's the trauma that they pass down the way these mothers and sons or mothers and daughters or daughters and fathers interact with each other the sort of legacy of their family that continues and the ways those patterns repeat themselves throughout history so totally different books okay but homegoing i feel like takes elements of both of them i think if you like the gimmick sorry to call it a gimmick but of one day being like just that day and just getting that interesting style where you're you're not really given a lot and then you just have to move on to the next thing then homegoing will really appeal to you because this book tells the story of two sisters who are born in it's on the gold coast of africa in like the 1700s and then you follow their like each of their lines descending lines but each chapter is like the next generation so the first chapter you get effie and essie and then you'll get effie's child essie's child and then it keeps going on like that so you'll read from a character's perspective for a chapter and then you'll just never hear about them again other than maybe the next generation reflecting on their mother or father. So at first I wasn't sure how I'd get on with that because I was getting really attached to some of these characters and then just having to like let them go. But actually this book works so well that way. It manages to paint a, such a sprawling picture and such a range of experiences but with these sort of recurring images and themes and you can really see like the passage of time especially in the respect of African history, history of civil rights in America, slavery, the treatment of black people in America because you are between Africa and America with some crossover. So I, that's where this comes in because like I say, this book is really about legacy, about family history and what a family passes down to each other. Obviously it's very much about race in America. Um, so you get Melody's perspective as a 16 year old girl in kind of modern-ish times and then you get her grandmother who is extremely scarred from her past and her family's involvement you know her own mother's experience of the tulsa race massacre so especially the american branch of this story definitely speaks to that like i say because every time you're moving on a generation you see really kind of beautifully and succinctly the movement of civil rights and the way in which things change or don't change for black people in America. It's definitely more in theme, in content, more similar to Red at the Bone, but in terms of form and in terms of that little gimmicky thing that I do love that makes the storytelling interesting and allows the form and the content to do more, that's where One Day comes in. So you can tell me I'm an idiot in the comments, but I'm sticking with it. We then have Trust Exercise by Susan Troy, plus What Red Was by Rosie Price, equals true story by kate petty trust exercise i read this book last year i'm not sure if i've talked about it on my channel actually it was one of those books that i thought i was gonna love like the description sounded so so at my street and then it ended up being like a little bit of a fail but i think it has value so it's about these two students in high school they go to a very specific like performing arts high school and um, sarah and david and they have this extremely strange teacher who something just doesn't feel quite right. Sarah and David get in this relationship that is kind of very angsty and difficult and then it's complicated by the strange sort of unnerving, nothing dark, but like just weird ways of this mini society of this school and the interactions between the teachers and the students and the students and the students. And then basically halfway through this book, there's a massive shift in terms of narrative, in terms of what you thought you knew you don't know anymore so it's basically like the past when Sarah and Dave were teenagers and then you move to the future and everything kind of changes and I think I've seen a lot of people say that's what put them off with this book because you know you finally get comfortable I think halfway through it's pretty bold to just be like everything's changed now so then What Red Was by Rosie Price is a book this came out last year as well I think um that is about a girl at university who makes friends with this guy they become like best instant friends um, she's called Kate, he's called Max, and then she goes to a party at Max's house. Max is very rich, Kate isn't, and she is assaulted. She is raped by one of Max's relatives. And from there, it's basically about her trauma, her sort of attempts at recovery, how that shatters her life, the decisions she has to make from there. It's a really interesting book. I think it was really carefully and sensitively and sort of honestly written. Now, True Story by Kate Reed Petty, one of my favourite books that I've read this year, is 
also about a sexual assault um, on a high school girl. This is in America, but it's also an extremely genre bending book. And the whole book, it's, I never want to say too much about this book because I don't want to give things away. You really just have to read it. But the point of this book is to look at this assault on this girl, how that has changed her life and how that is, again, received, perceived, thought about and talked about and kind of made into history and made into fact by her and by everyone else around her in her high school, in her community. You follow the girl who's been assaulted and then you follow this guy who's a peer of hers at school who's not really very involved with it, with it at all. He's very much on the outskirts, but you also then follow his perspective. So I also think this is an absolutely brilliant look at assault. I think this book is amazing in what it does, in what by the end of it, it's put you through and made you see. I think it's truly exceptional and it is so genre bending, so experimental. It's told in loads of different like genres, loads of different styles. So like sometimes it'll be the girl's college essays that she writes and rewrites and that's your way of getting into her mind. When you're following Nick, the guy, there's parts that are almost like a horror short story where he goes to the woods and spends time there. There's diaries, there's journals. It's just so experimental and so focused on that storytelling, on the like page sense, but extrapolating out to like the way we tell stories, the way we, what we do with information and facts and stories. And that's definitely, I think, what this book was doing as well. For me, this was just much, much more successful. So yeah, I think this is a pretty good Franken book and also like red and white equals pink. So can't argue with me. Last one. I think The Franken Child Between The Blue is Die by Toni Morrison and Love After Love by Ingrid Persaud is the Colour Purple by Alice Walker. I read The Bluest Eye very recently. Um, I think my last video was me wrapping this up and it's the story of a young girl called Pecola living in a town in Ohio in the 1940s, post-depression America. And it's about the community but and her family, which is kind of very abusive and uh, deprived. But specifically, it's about her, about her self-loathing, the abuse, that she is put through and how that kind of changes her as a person. It is very bleak, um, but the pain is written about in a very beautiful, raw way. Love After Love by Ingrid Persaud, my favourite book of last year, I am obsessed with this book, is about a, it's set in Trinidad and it's about a mother called Betty, her son Solo, um, and they live in Trinidad. Solo's father died when he was very young and they don't really talk about that. You know immediately that he was abusive, but that's kind of all you know. And then they need to take in a lodger. So they take in this lodger called Mr. Cheaton. And it's about how they then kind of become a family. Something comes out quite soon into the book, which then kind of ruptures them as a family. But it's about how these three parts interact with each other, move. It's about all different perspectives of love and this sort of found family. The Colour Purple by Alice Walker. I read this this year. Loved it. Really, really loved it. Is... A pretty good Franken book, I think, in that. It starts off um, again in the, so this is in the South in America, the Blue Styles, Ohio, but in around the, I think it's like the 1930s that this might start, or the 1940s, so very similar. And it's about a young black girl called Celie. And she, much like Pecola, is not in a good situation at the start of this book. She, much like Pecola, has been abused sexually by a family member. She is similarly down on herself or similarly kind of traumatized. Uh, but in this book, very quickly, she is kind of given away in marriage by her father to this man that she detests. And again, she's not having a very happy life. But then why this book is kind of like this, I feel, is that although this book starts very bleak and very sad as this is, it becomes a really positive, happy story about found family, certainly self-worth, about a woman coming into her own, learning how to be happy and to live the way she wants to live and becoming kind of empowered. That's something, again, that's extremely prevalent in this book with one of the characters. And yeah, this book has a happy ending, which is one of my favourite things about it. And I think that they're both 
not that it has to have a happy ending this has a horribly sad ending and they're both extremely important beauty to do written books that are doing totally different things but i think that these books are very similar in the way they look at like race um, at a particular time in america how that affects the life of a young woman um but we don't really go beyond Piccola's youth in here whereas we grow up with Celie and the ideas of finding happiness and finding family is very similar to this this does have this is kind of very sad and happy um as is this these two books also both look at sexuality and yeah I think that it's a very good Franken book if I do say so my gosh darn self so I've been filming for like half an hour um, maybe I should have like split this into two videos, but I was just so pleased with myself for this idea. I couldn't resist. Thanks so much for watching. Please let me know down below if you think uh, this was ridiculous and I am a fool. Or just if you think any of these were good, if I've made you want to read any of these. If you've got your own Franken book, please do let me know. Um, so yeah, happy spooky season to you all. Sorry that this wasn't a spooky video. I will see you in my next one. Bye!